Happy Sunday. Hi everybody, this is Kate Quinn from Fabricated Quilts. If you can see and hear me well, can you go ahead and give me a thumbs up or a like so that I know that you're out there and I know that you can hear me well. And if you need me to make any adjustments to the camera, anything like that. So I'm very excited to share that Honey is here today. So he will be helping me and sharing all your questions. Please let us know if you have any questions as you go. He's really good at trying to keep track of those and find a good time to break in and share that information with me. So I put a couple of designs uh, up on the screen. Beautiful, don't you think? We're going to show you how to do this. It's awesome. I love it. I'm so excited to share it with you. So, of course, I want to make sure that we address how we draw, right? So these little stitching line discs with the different circlets on the inside, different sizes, they allow us to mimic the action of the ruler foot, right? And so when you're using that, see how fat that is? I don't want to be using a really skinny pen, you know, if I'm using this. I want it to fit in there good and not really wiggle around. And that's what's going to help you get that accuracy. Okay, you guys know how I love math, right? Everybody, <laughs> I think a couple people have already uh, seen how much I love math. But math is so awesome in quilting and it's so important. Uh, let's see. So somebody said they needed their sound turned up. So my sound is all the way up. So I don't know what's going on on your side. But uh, I've got it up as loud as I can, so hopefully Susan too. Hmm. All right, let me try one more thing. Let me know, is this any better as far as your sound? So I did make uh, some adjustments and uh, hopefully that's better for people. Okay, so here we go. So what are we doing with these designs? So one of the things that People ask me all the time, one of the most common questions that we get is how can I use my templates for an all over design? So what I'm going to show you today is some ideas for using your spin effects templates with your quilt and doing it either as an all over design or potentially maybe in a block of different sizes. And the, the uh, information here, if you notice, we are putting our spin effects on the diagonals, right? So let me just pull one of mine out real quick and share it with you. So we'll use this one because we have it conveniently available. And let me get my little card. I got it. Yeah, I got it right here. Thank you, baby. Okay, so right up at the top, it says five and a half. This is the spin effects number 15. And this implies the size that it would be in a square, okay? So this is not a five and a half inch square, right? It's, it's on the diagonal. Your design is on the diagonal. So how do we know if this can fit? So any diagonal of a square is multiply the size of the square times 1.414. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do that math. I did it already. I put it in a PDF for you. <laughs> and my husband was kind enough to type it up for us and make it easy. So right here, you see this is the template sizes that the spin effects come in. And this is if you're going to use it on the diagonal. If you're not using it on the diagonal, then this doesn't mean anything, okay? Because then it's just whatever size your, your uh, square is. If it's a three and a half inch square, it's a three and a half inch square. But if I'm just trying to make it fit edge to edge, corner to corner like this on the diagonal, this is the math that you need. 
And I won't lie to you, you got to fudge a little bit. So we're going to talk about that too, because these numbers are sometimes like 0.88 or whatever, you know. So what I've done is I've rounded them to the nearest quilting math number. And I'm going to show you how that works. And then I'll show you some ideas for how you can fudge it. And the key to this, the reason that we're even going through all of this is this is continuous. And I could make it continuous as long as I wanted until the end of time. It can just keep on going. So that's what we are trying to share. And these diagonals really allow us to do that because we sort of have lots of options about how we do it. <laughs> All right, so somebody was just telling me if they'd known there was math, they wouldn't be a quilter. You know what? I stuck with it. It's okay, and my math is better than it used to be. All right, so let's show you what we're doing. Let me grab my first one. So the first spin effects that we are going to be doing is the spin effects number four, and a lot of people have this one. This is the one from the sampler set. Oh, sorry, I chipped my nail. You will have to deal with my crazy manicure today. <laughs> so anyway, this one I think we'll start with. It looks amazing and a lot of people have it. And it also has pretty easy math. So let me show you how it looks and then I'm going to show you how to sew it. So there it is, right there. Doesn't that look awesome? So this is continuous and the relationship on this first one is that the square size is two and a half. And that means that both of these, this right here, will fit in this two and a half inch square and they will go corner to corner. And then we have some uh, choices about how we continue. So let's go ahead and we'll get that set up. All right, and then of course, let me tell you one other thing. When we're using our spin effects, we also can use it different ways, right? I mean, we can use it this way or we can use it reverse. So the one that we did um, on the sample, it has these points always going towards the outside. So anytime you have one of these boxes, this round part is towards the middle, but you can do it your way and you should feel comfortable going ahead and manipulating it, doing it however you wanna do it. So I'm gonna line it up and I've got this line right here to line up so we can get everybody where they need to be. I'm just gonna check it right there, but I'm gonna start right down here. So I'm gonna put my needle right in that corner. I'll pull up my bobbin thread and we'll get ourselves seated right in the corner. All right, so let me just show you what you're looking at. So I have a center line on almost every one of the spin effects and I can always do like a little tug or whatever. And I'm gonna sew into the center, that's the goal. Now you'll see that there's some additional markings on this because the size of this is two and a half all the way across with three boxes, that's seven and a half. Did I do my math right? <laughs> and so when we do it like this, this is gonna let us just keep going around. So we have lots of lines that we can line everything up. We've got the center lines here and here, and we've got this line right here. So we can do a little smushing, a little fudging if we need to make your fabric behave. And now we'll do the next one right into the corner. You'll see that the markings that I drew on the outside would set it up for essentially an eight inch space. Like if this was an eight inch box, this is seven and a half, and then this additional quarter is your eight inch box. And I did that so you could see this is a common size that we have in our quilting world. And so if you wanted to do it like that, then you would be able to do this in an eight inch box, but you would have to put a little spacer in there. Okay, so essentially we're gonna do one uh, half of our diagonal. So let me show you real quick. So you gotta see how we're going, right? And the reason that we're only going to do this part is we want to start filling in all of this and we'll work our way back to this. 
from this position, we've got to get up to the middle here. Once we're here, we can do all of these connected boxes. And what we'll actually do is we'll work our way to here. And then we'll do all of these and get back to here, finish, and then we can do the bottom. So we're, we're kind of working a little bit of a half at a time. And we have to think about where are we going? How, you know, if we, we don't want to box ourselves in. So as we come around this diagonal, we can get to here. We can travel out to here and kind of come back. Anytime you're sort of in the middle, you can reach all four of these. So we never want to let ourselves get boxed in. And there are so many different ways for us to do this. So I recommend that you draw this out on paper. So this is our box right here. Remember we said that the points are all going to come to the outside of the box. So every time that you spin, you've got to be looking for that and making sure that you can put your point, your little triangle, and then the curvy parts in the center. All right, so here we go. Okay, and then we'll flip it, get lined up. And here, if you're off a little bit, like if your center doesn't seem like it's on, go ahead and correct it before you start your next one. So here we'll get up to this next corner. All right, and then let's show you where we are. We gotta keep you guys having a good view. All right, so we've got these two. Let's go ahead and try to finish this one. He can bring us back to here. And then we're gonna try to get to this corner. So we can finish this whole one and get ourselves over to here. And then we'll start working these because that'll help us travel this way to get over to these other ones. All right, and as we said, points go out and you can see the alignment, it fits pretty well. So we'll just kind of start working ourselves around this one. And then get lined up. Now, let's talk about the marking for a second. So because these are non-standard measures, like I don't know too many grids that you have that have a two and a half inch stencil or anything like that. I did mark these myself and I just used my rotary ruler and it's worth it. It's worth the time. And there's maybe some easier ways to do it. You can just mark longer lines and then mark one row at a time. But if this was just one one box that I was doing, I would mark this whole thing. Um, so don't let go until you're ready. All right, so right here, when we do this next one, that's gonna get us to this corner. So we're not gonna complete this bottom part until we work our way through here. So we wanna get to this corner so we can do all of these, and then we'll end up over here. So that's kind of our goal, we're looking to get ourselves in there. So I'm gonna just smush a little bit so I can get right to the corner. And don't worry too much about everything being perfecty perfect because it's, the chalk's all gonna go away. All we wanna do is just try to get things where when we come into the center, maybe we can try to get the center of these connected. So it's okay if we're you know moving around a little bit. Don't worry too much about that. It's gonna be okay. So notice how we'll just do the one side, wait till the needle stops moving. I wanna keep you guys a little bit in view. And then also I can help adjust my center. So right here, I've got my center line and this line, that'll help me get right into the center. There's a lot of good visuals on our spin effects that help us. And then right here, on the bottom, we've got that line too. So you can give a little tug if you need to, to get everybody in place. No, you know, no big tugs. We don't wanna distort anything. We just wanna kind of give a little bit of a smush so that we can make them behave. All right. So we'll keep going around until we get to that center corner there. 
So here, this is where we'll be in this center of all of these. So all of these can be completed from this center portion. So I'll get them lined up. Get right into the corner. And now we'll start working our way around this one. Okay. Center line. Let me turn this so you can see. So if for any reason it looks like it's not fitting, here's one of our first fudges. So let's put our spacing gauge up there. So um, Kelly Mack, I'll answer your question. There is an online catalog. Um, I know it is not the full catalog, but I, I believe we do have that somewhere. I'll try to find the link, and um, if I can find it, I'll add it onto the post header and show you some of the different shapes that we have, because we have amazing, gorgeous spin effects. So right here, that looks a little big to me. Do you see that? Let's see if we can get you in just a little closer so you can see what I'm seeing as well. So right here, that is looking just slightly big. Then just smash it. Just tip your template a little bit. Nobody's going to notice. It's more important that we get to the corner perfectly than if we're perfectly at the top of the template. As long as we have a point there, we'll be able to make that fudging and we, we can do that with any of these. So here, you know, like if this wasn't giving us what we wanted, we could turn it in a little bit and make sure that we have our quarter or we could just shift this just slightly if this needs to come in just a little bit so that we get the bottom curve right into where we want. So as we stitch, I think maybe you're seeing a little bit, the more that we stitch, the more is gonna draw up. So that's pretty normal. Okay, and we'll just keep getting this going around, get everybody lined up. All right, here we go. And then we'll do this last one. So there's a lot of sewing today, you know, to kind of show you what we're doing, to show you the path. Okay, so where we started right here, if we do this top half, and then we can come and we can do this and we can go around, and we can do this one and go around, and then we can finish up whatever we need to. So we'll probably end up doing this row a little bit last. We're going to travel a little bit from here. So we're going to work our way back over to here, and then we'll come across and we'll go this way. So, and like I said, I can't give you the exact path because there's probably about a hundred different ways to do it. But you can see that just through that, we've been able to close those. So I can work my way back over to here and I can close these two and I could go this way. You'll see that there's just so many choices. So it's, it's kind of hard to say do exactly this, but all of these will allow you to travel back and be able to do all of these designs in a continuous fashion, which is very cool. Okay, and I think I'll take one more stitch there to kind of get into the center. We can close. So here, I don't want to close this because I, I would have to kind of get myself back over there, I guess. I guess we can do that. That'll still work. So can you, can you see the path or is it too complicated? It is a little complicated. I won't lie. Get ourselves into this next corner. We'll tug that just a little bit. And I need to make sure that my, my little bottom here is correctly aligned so that I'm not going crazy. All right, so we've gotten our top line done. So let's go ahead and start working ourselves back on this side a little bit. Okay. 
All right, get myself aligned. There we go. I was a little bit off on that one. All right, so rather than close this now, we're gonna start working this row. So we want our point at the top. All right, we'll try to make it go a little faster so we can get on to some other fun things, but we do want to show you that it, it will work. So here, let's go ahead and we'll finish this one and we'll come back and close that one after. So on this one, we'll go halfway here, and this will bring us all the way around the design. By just doing that part right there, just half of that, now we can go all the way around, and that'll bring us right back to the center where we were at the top corner there, right there. We can finish this entire square, and then we'll get back to there. machine was not cooperating there. All right, here we go. I like it when we can sew more than just one side. We get the more, get more done faster. All right, so let's close this one. Let's get everybody lined up. Make sure that we have enough room to get right back into that center there. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and we'll, we'll bring ourselves down here, and then we can do this one and this one and close this out. All right, get lined up. Okay, so the box needs its point on the corner. Okay, and we just did that one line, and now we'll be able to make it all the way around because we didn't sew the entire side of that. We just sewed one side, and we'll travel around the whole area to get this in. center so can you see we're almost there we're we're getting ourselves right back where we need to be so we've got the lines here that can help us if we're a little bit off help us get right back into this center position okay and then this one again one side brings you around okay so you're not going to do the whole shape. You're just going to do that piece of it that will get you out to the next corner. So you'll see there's a lot of fudging going on, huh? All right, let's see where we are. We're getting there. So let's see what we want to do. We want to close this side too. So let's see if we can close this side and, and uh, come around. So do you notice that we have this side already completed here? So on this side, we're gonna come up and we'll complete this corner. 
So let's see if we can line that up just a little bit, maybe one stitch right there at the bottom to create the better shape. It needs to be lined up with this one. That'll make it look just a little bit cleaner. All right, now we can start closing this one and we want to get over here. So we got to try to fill all of this up before we come back. So we're going to start looking at how we can finish up all of those sides so that we can get this entire side of this design completed. I think we'll go this way so we've got one in here and then we can do this last side there okay so now we'll finish this side get us back into the center Okay, so let's show you where we're at so you can get a little view before we final close out the final. Okay, so this right here will bring us in. We can do a complete right here and then we'll be able to finish ourselves and we'll end right back where we started. The key with this is thinking about where you need to go next you know, and making sure that you're not trapping yourself. That's really the biggest part of this whole thing is helping you close out the whole design and making sure that you can not get yourself trapped so that you can move through the whole design. So I do recommend playing with this on paper. That'll really help you so you can get that flow. Start with just a four by four. I do think the nine is a little bit harder, but I do want to show you that it's possible. So Carol asks, uh, whenever you draw this on paper, do you have to fudge also, or is it just due to the shrinkage of the fabric while you're sewing? It's due to the math. So Carol, uh, to answer your question, yes, you would still need to fudge a little bit on paper. And on paper, I don't even worry about it. I just, I know that it, it might be a little bit off, but I still draw it anyway, just to give me the base shapes. And then we're at the end. So let's get lined up for our last one. Okay. And let me just tack this off and then we'll get this out of here. So I like uh, with this poly thread, this is a little slippery. This is a beautiful variegated thread from Madeira. And it's a polyester 40 weight and I'm using Isocord 40 weight gray in the bottom. So I'll show you that also. And let me cut this and get all these threads off of here. All right. So what do you think? Do you like it? So, you know, um, I'm going to answer Norma Salman, your question. So what was the formula that I used? So the, the template is not going to change size. If I sew two of these end to end, either direction, it doesn't matter. It's the height of the template here. This is three and a half. And so what I did is I said, okay, if my diagonal of my square is three and a half, what is my square size that has a diagonal of that size? And so I went ahead and I did the math for you. So you don't have to figure it out if you don't want to. The three and a half inch template will fit inside the two and a half inch square on the diagonal, right? This is all that we're talking about. It won't fit on in a two and a half inch square if you're doing it on the plus right? Only on the diagonal. So what we're doing today is we're just using diagonal math. And the math is that the diagonal of a square is 1.414 bigger than the side of the square. Okay, so it's just, I just multiplied, I mean, actually, I divided this. So if it's three and a half, 
I divided by that 1.414, and that's how I got the square size. And it gives you weird decimal numbers, and I just tried to make it the closest reasonable uh, quilt measure that I could. So that's why there is fudging, because it's not exactly perfect. Okay, so um, Fatima asked about, do the templates come in a set? Yes, our spin effects are so awesome. They come in lots of different sets. You can buy them individually or you can buy them as a group of five. And the group of five sizes are these sizes right here. So if you wanted to buy a grouping of them, you'd be able to get all five of these in a size. And so we have quite a few different ones. Um, somebody was just asking about my writing on here. So let me... I'll just, I'll just show you. It's my personal note. This is Benefix number four that I plan to use. And it fits in the two and a half inch square for the three and a half inch template. And it fits on the diagonal. So just a little bit of a note for myself. Okay. So yes, if I was doing a full quilt, I would, number one, I'd use a way bigger template than this. I would not want to do this tiny little guy um, on a full size quilt, but we have some bigger ones that we're going to share in just a little bit. And I wanted to flip it over um, just so you can see, like, this is without all of the markings, right? It's just so give you a little bit of a different um, look there. Okay. And that's just plain thread. That's just basic gray. And, you know, like I said, it's not perfectly perfect because the math is a little bit off. You may have to do a little smush or you may have a little overstitching in different places, but I don't care. I think it looks awesome. So I would just totally use it. So you can always manipulate the template. I try not to manipulate the center position right here because this is pretty exact fit on the foot. But if I needed to short this side to make this a quarter inch away, you could just tip this a little bit or, you know, pull it over a little bit, and then you can get that. You can get that quarter inch. As long as you're touching up here, you can still sew in, and that'll help correct right there. So I'll show you that a little bit more on a, one of the bigger ones that we have that we're going to share with you. So real quick, what we're going to do next, I'm going to show you the next size that we have. So let me get this batting smoothed out. And this is just the four by four. So this is going to go a little bit faster. And then I have a little variation that I want to share with you with this one. And just for the person who was asking about the note right there, the little note, there's my note. So this one is called um, Big Sis, Little Sis. And I'll show you why. And it's really cute. Okay. So this is the spin effects number eight. Okay. And again, we can use it any way we want. We can use this side or we can use this side. So maybe for this one, we'll put this pointy side um, in the corners and we'll make the triangles come in together towards the center. Okay. And then this is the little baby sister right there. So big sis, little sis. So this one is the uh, seven and a half. Here, flip it over. Seven and a half right there. And the size for the seven and a half is a five and a quarter uh, box. So this box is five and a quarter, which means that this would be a 10 and a half inch square. So if you wanted to put this in an 11 or a 12 inch space, this would fit well in a two by two with a little bit of a open space around the outside. And you could always stitch this in and then you would have a little frame, which would be really pretty. So with this one, let's go ahead. We'll, like I said, we'll get our points into the center. Hopefully this one as will go a little faster, I think, because it's quite a, quite a bit bigger. So, all right. So let me show you the alignment. So we have pretty good. Some of them fit a little better than, than the other one. So the two and a half, it is a little bit of a tighter fit because the actual measure is like 2.6, but we are 2.4, whatever. So the template's actually a little bit bigger. This one is a little closer fit, which is really nice. 
So let's go around the outside. We're gonna just do the one side as we did before. Get to the center and try not to cross over. If it looks like you're gonna cross over the center, don't. Just stop and then we can adjust the template when we do the next size, okay? So we're gonna try to put the curvy part all the way out to the corner all the time. Now, we wanna come in and maybe come right to the center and that's where we'll travel for our next units, okay? But before we travel, I wanna share my little sister uh, setup here real quick. Let's pull this off. Now you can come back and do this after or you can do it right now like I'm doing. It's your choice. So what I'm trying to do is kind of flip this up without getting the tape all the way off. Oh, there we go. All right, where's little sister? She's babysitting, right? So she got the little sister uh, has to be watched. All right, so this tape is a little bit weak. I can tell because it just pulled right off. So I'm gonna take it off. And I'm gonna use a little bit um, a stronger tape that I have. This is my scotch tape and I'm gonna put my little pull tab on there to make it easy. Just pinch that like that, just fold that little area back. Make sure your tape doesn't interfere with the foot, but make sure that it is covering both sides enough to prevent that from moving around. Okay, now obviously I need it to move around because I need to open it. So right now, let me show you what I can do with this one as we go. I can use these lines back here, right there, they have the diagonals. So let me show you so you can see right there, that diagonal right there, I don't have to make any extra marks, but I can use those and I can line up my little baby right here if I want to. And I can even change directions. You can see that this one's got the point going out, right? And I could even put, you know, many of these in right now. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen with this. So we could actually put all of these in if we want to not switch around so many times. So right there on the diagonal kind of getting him right in that center position so we have him nicely seated, her little sister. Okay, we'll do this one as well, get this last one in, using our diagonals right there and right there. Okay, and now I can take this off and I'll just set it aside. So it's convenient to be able to do so many of those at the same time. And then I'll just leave this open, you know, with the key so that way I won't have to worry about it. Okay, so we're here and we want this pointy side to come out to the corner. So I always do the visual check right there, make sure that you can find it. And then we'll just get him lined up right here into the corner. So just to reiterate, this one and the little sister are both spin effects number eight. The size that I'm using right now, this is the seven inch. And then the other one is the three and a half. This is the smaller one. And these are gonna fit in that five and a quarter inch uh, square. So that's the square that we have right now. So see here, the lines don't match up. So I can just give a little smush on there. Again, doing one side of the design, not all of them. And we can do quite a bit more of this one. We'll do uh, more of the sides and then we'll switch the template. That way we can kind of get most of these in there. Oh, I didn't have him lined up very good. He's pretty far off, do you see that? He needs to come in quite a bit more. We'll fix it later, right? It's bomb on time. We'll fix that one line. We're gonna get this guy in the center and then we'll fix that later. He's gonna be overstitched a few times, so I'm not gonna worry about trying to tack him in right now. We'll talk, tack him in later if we need to, because we don't, he'll be stitched over a bunch of times. Okay, so we'll come back into the center right away. See, he'll get stitched over right like that. Same alignment right here. 
And if I need to kind of give a little tug here to get myself in, if this doesn't fit, look what we can do. We can push this forward. Make sure that it's touching on the side that you're sewing, but just push it forward a little bit so you can get to the corner. And then we'll do the same correction when we come back, but we'll have it on the other side, a quarter inch on the other side. So right here, we got right in and we had to push that forward. So that means we have to make an adjustment on this side too. See how that's bigger than a quarter? We can just go like that. Make sure he's in the hook there. Make sure he's touching. And now we're a quarter inch away there. And that's the fudging. That's how we can kind of make that little bit of an adjustment. And if we have so many of these, nobody will be able to tell that we've made that adjustment. It just will not be obvious to anybody because we have so many of them all going lots of different directions. Everything's going to be fine. Okay, so when we, when we do this one, we cannot get back to the center right here, right? Because we're coming out like that. So before we finish up this one, we want to put that other template on and we want little sis to do her work, her job. So we'll take that off. And for these, the rule is, I mean, you could do anything you want, but I selected the three inch because the five inch might be a little too big. And you can go ahead and use whatever, you know, choices. You can put a different shape in there. You don't have to use the same shape. So we have another one that we'll show you where we picked a different shape to pair up. So we can have a completely different look, which would be kind of cool. All right, again, we're using these diagonals right here. You can see these are the 45s and they line up perfectly. Okay. Okay, we're in that center and now we have the ability to travel out to the next right there, okay? So what we'll do for the rest of this one is I'm gonna put little sister to bed. She's gonna take a nap and we'll just kind of speedily get these designs done. But now you understand how you want to put that other template in the middle before you're traveling and that'll help you, you know, get all of that stuff done. Okay, so we want our points to come out. So let's turn it so you can see. So here's our alignment again. Looks really good. Always doing that one side to travel around. And that's because here we can pivot around the center. That's why this is working for us because it lets us get ourselves right out to each corner, finish up that whole design before we travel. Okay. Oh, I scared myself. <laughs> Something fell off of my table. All right, let's get ourselves aligned here at the corner and you can check your alignment right there. If these line up and this lines up right here at this quarter inch where these cross, that's a pretty good sign that I'm, I'm gonna have a good fit, that I don't need to manipulate too much. And like I said, if you see that you know you're not gonna fit, you can go ahead and manipulate right there just by shorting the design a little bit on either side. We can't make the template bigger, but we can make it smaller, which is really convenient. Keeping our point out to each of the edges of the boxes, I think that's probably one of the hardest things that I struggle with because sometimes I turn it the wrong way. Ah, and then you're like, what happened? Okay, so we've got our point. This is the edge of the box. So we're gonna line him up and we can Get him right on those lines so he should fit right back into the center beautifully. I'm right in the corner. And now we'll do this one, the pointed end, and we'll get right into the center beautifully. 
So I have a question for you guys, since Honey is not sharing any questions for me. I want to know if anybody has ever tried something like this and tried this in a continuous fashion or kind of thought about it. Could we do it in a square? We can. The reason that I like this is the way that we're setting this up. The design is coming out to the corners, but like if we did this in a square, it would be a plus. So you'd be in the middle of your boxes. Whereas here we have the corners of the boxes to travel. And that's why this is different. And that's why I like this particular design. It's not that, that using it in a square would not work. It totally would. But you're going to get a lot different feel and a lot different flavor to how the design connects to itself. And I just really like this. I like that it kind of has that um, point to point feel. So here, we'll go ahead and we'll close this one and then we'll close this one around. So this will be a full shape right here. So we'll give them a little tug to get right in the corner. And it would be easy to come back in with Little Sister and just put those center designs in if I wanted to. I can just tie it off right in the center because there's already a lot of um, stitching right in the center. So if you just you know pulled your Little Sister bobbin thread up in the center there, and continued stitching in the center of each of these, I don't think anybody would really notice because there's already a lot of excess stitching in that space. Okay, so let's, let's just show you how we're doing. The bigger that these templates are, the little bit more care you need to kind of pull your tape up because these flex a little bit more when they're bigger. So if you just pull that up, you can kind of like really torque on your template. So give them a little assistance. And so this one, the benefit to having little sister in here is she adds a little bit more quilting detail and kind of a funky little shape in here too. Um, and you could put a bigger one in, you know, if you wanted. Um, the bigger one is five and a half. And remember that our boxes are five and a quarter. So what would happen if we put the bigger one in is these would cross over right here, which would be fine. You totally could do that. That's just another choice. But that was why I did not make that choice. So if you wanted that and you wanted them to overlap a little bit, you absolutely could have that. All right, let's finish it up. We'll get right in there, get ourselves right into the center prettily. Okay, and then this one will be a complete right here on the corner. So in addition to showing you how to do this and, and the path and the math, it's also an opportunity to share how pretty the spin effects are and you know what a gorgeous design that they create. So that's kind of what we're doing here as well. We're not just showing you how to stitch it, but we're also sharing some of the choices that you might have. So we'll tack this a little bit right here. Hold this top loop right here, and you can just bring this right in. And we'll line up right where we left off and bring our needle down and up. That lets me pick up my bobbin thread right there, pull both sides of the loop and then I can trim that off. Okay, so let's cut these and then we'll show you how it looks. Oh, I think we're, we're trapped. There we go. I'm kind of stuck on my template there. All right, so that's our big sister, little sister. And Gorgeous, and of course you can see, you, you don't have to fill it in. I mean, you can leave it more open if you want, but this is gonna make a little bit bigger spaces in here. But you can always put, you know, some straight line fill in here, or you could echo this if you want to, um, but just really fun. So here's the option um, with two templates, and then here's the option just with itself, and they kind of connect right up here. So always leaving half of it open if you need to continue on to the other side 
and always the center point would allow you to access three boxes at a time, or, you know, essentially four boxes at a time. So if I want to move to the next set of three boxes, I would kind of go into the middle over here and access all those around there. Or you can even just keep traveling across the top and then travel across the bottom in a zigzag fashion until you get to those three box spaces where you can access each of those boxes. All right, so let's flip it over. I'll show you the back real quick. I just like letting you see the back because then you really get to see it without all those markings. Um, yeah, so Nancy Ferguson had a really good idea. She says, would you ever do a different color for big sis than little sis? Of course. I think that's an excellent idea. You should totally try that and send me a picture because I want to see it. That's a really good idea. Um, yeah, you totally can do that. I mean, you, you guys are coming up with some great ideas. So Linda Martindale's idea was, could you put little sister right here in the beginning, in the center of the block? Sure, why not? You know, or I would even put the bigger one in here. Maybe put, you know, middle sister, the middle child, put her right in here. And you can make these come in here inside, or you can make them offset like that. So what, what that is telling me is that your imaginations are just bouncing around with awesomeness. So that, that's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's go to our next one. All right. So this one, we, we added some more boxes and these fit pretty well in here, but the reason we added a little more is we kind of want to show you that whole travel thing. So here I can, I can start halfway and I can get to this center and I can do all the way over to here. Then once I'm over here, I can kind of go around and get to here, which will allow me to finish all three of these and back to here. And then I'll finish this one back to the center. And then if there's any half whatever left out here, we can close all of those. And I also have one additional technique that we're going to share with this template. So this one, just uh, for information, is this spin effects number 11. Let me flip it over. Spin effects number 11 at five and a half. And I love this template. I think it is so ridiculously pretty. So let's go ahead and we'll get it set up. So the way that we're gonna set this one up is we're gonna have the pointy part to be uh, in the center. I think I'll get myself set first and then I'll get the ruler in position. It's a little complicated. I don't have very much room out here, so you can see the grip out here isn't really holding. So I'm just gonna have to make sure I'm holding down here, being smart. Um, and hopefully there's enough room that he won't get caught. If he is, I'll, I'll stick another piece of fabric under there. Okay, right into the center and stop. And you can see this one fits pretty well right now. You can see that he doesn't really have any trouble. So we're going to do the whole shape here. Okay. Now, before we move on, this is the technique that I want to share with you on this one. Let's get these out of here. I absolutely love how this template pivots. So what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna pivot so it touches right here at the top. And let's just do one or two. So touch and come back to the center. And then we'll do this side. Touching right there so that the plastic is touching the tip of the outermost area, not right there, but at the let me see if I can point to it. Right there, he's touching. Okay. So we can do more of those if we want to, 
Like if we wanted to do another one, we can get this beautiful little cross hatch right there, which I think is so cool. So let's come on over here and we'll be in the center here. So we'll close that design later, right? So we haven't, we haven't closed this, so we don't know where to cross hatch right there. And we haven't got that here either. So what we'll do is we're gonna start working around. Notice how our rounded edge right here is gonna be in the outside corner of the block. So we'll go ahead and we'll sew in. Again, we're not gonna have the full side of this one yet, but these three out here we will. Okay, so we'll do those first. Stopping in the center. And now we can connect this one right here. So um, somebody had a question really quickly about us. How do we uh, draw these boxes? So we drew them. I just drew them with my rotary ruler and some chalk, a chalk pencil. So here, you know, I can put that in. It looks like they're going to kind of touch over a little bit. So here's another option. If you feel like that is unsightly, let's do this. Let's just make a partial on these other ones, right? So we won't go all the way in. Okay, so we're going to kind of come to where this deep curve is, and that's where we'll stop. So we're lined up here, and we'll do the same thing on this side. Sort of until the foot starts touching right there. So that's another type of embellishment that we can put in there. That might work a little better since these are crossing over. Or you can make this deeper so that if they cross over, that's fine. But then this little part is down lower. So that's just another option for you. Okay. And you can see that some of these fit a little better than others. You know, when we, when we have this need to smush because this is not as precise of a measurement that means that we have to maybe you know manipulate the fabric a little bit more some of them are going to be a closer fit to the box size than others let's see get myself lined up so i want this center line so if you notice i'm not touching all the way at the back right there but it won't matter. This will get me into the corner and it's still gonna make that pretty shape. And that's what uh, the playing on paper will help you figure that out. So here we wanna kinda get over so we can start moving into these other sides. So we can do a partial and we can kinda go zigzag. So that's what I'm gonna share next. So notice that this wings out, so there's a little bit of crossover in this design. So lining it up here, even if it's not touching at the back, we want to come into the corner. Because this particular template has a little longer straight area, it is a lot easier to adjust this than some of the other ones, right? Because it, it has a long skinny part Basically, we're just appending like two or three stitches right there in order to get that. So I'm lining it up here to make the tip touch the corner. Some more questions about the boxes that you drew. You said you used a rotary ruler. What is that? Um, any of those, that Omni Grid ruler right there? Okay. So I, I just use a ruler like this. I knew what size box that I needed because we did the math. So this is the chart that we have a link to in, in the, uh, this is a PDF and we've linked to it in the header. Okay. And then I just use that information. So right here, you know, the one that we're doing right now, Let's see, is the three and seven eighths, five and a half. So this is the template size we're using right now. So these boxes are three and seven eighths inches square. 
And that's because I did the math. I, I did the math all ahead of time. And then when I put this on here, I knew that each of these was the size that I needed in order to fit that template that's five and a half. And this will work with any five and a half inch spin effects. So it's not that you have to, you know, do the math for everyone. I did the math already for you. Okay. So here we're going to move to this one and then we'll start working our way towards this center so we can get all of those areas done and then we'll work our way back. So here I can just do a little finger smush. I'm lining up these lines and that's going to help me get myself right into that corner there. Okay. And then pivoting it so that I've got the center alignment. I've got those lines and I can just give a little adjustment if needed. And we'll just keep working our way around. So I've got all these reference lines. I've got a line here and I've got this line right here that gets me right into that center. Gives me that perfect quarter inch so I don't have a lot of uh, need for my spacing gauge in this instance because the templates have such good information. Notice that I'm, I'm right here. I've got two lines coming in that will get me right into that center. So let's make sure that we're touching at the top and then we can come down. So I'm going to address um, Susan Tapp's question. So I, I do obviously quilt my quilts with rulers and I, I post my quilts a lot of times I do. But when we're doing a class where we're trying to show you the technique, it can be really, you know, would, would I want to stop quilting my quilt if you ask me a question and then get another piece of fabric and do it on that? So um, we do have a lot of information on the So Steady University where your designers and your uh, educators are quilting on actual quilts. So um, when I did my fun and fancy education seminar, I actually made a quilt and I show the patterns um, for most of the designs on an actual quilt with seams and, and, it, and it's big. It's like, you know, 50 by 70 or whatever. So you'll see that I'm manipulating the fabric and I have to, you know, turn things around. But, you know, I, I don't necessarily have a quilt that this fits in right now. And try to imagine that I'm teaching every single week and I would have to create a new quilt for you every week so that I could show you the designs. So it's just, it's not really practical. I would love to be able to do that. But, you know, we're trying to give something that everybody can use, not something that we can use on one quilt for one person. So we do want to try to share, you know, as diverse and universal a lesson as we can at any given time. And, and we appreciate your understanding. And I understand that, that need and that want. It, it is something that we all want. I mean, we want to quilt our quilts, but I hope that you'll understand so that's a little bit more complicated than it sounds to do that. So let's go ahead and um, finish this one out. We'll get ourselves here to this corner there. That's what we're aiming for. All right, and once we're at this center position right here, then we can access all of these around this outside space. And you'll see that these aren't filled in, but as we work our way back, we'll fill those in, and that'll help us get the rest of those filled in. All right. So we want the round part to be at the corner of the box and this pointed part to be in the center. And here we'll just do that first side and that lets us spin and get the rest of these aligned so that we can do all the rest of these. Don't worry too much about the lines and the chalk. Remember that those all come off. What's just really important is that we try to get the lines to connect up. So like right there, I can see that I'm on the chalk line and that means that these lines right here should perfectly get me here to the corner and I should be able to easily get this one right back to the center because he's right where I started and I haven't shifted the template at all. All right, here we go. So 
So checking that alignment back there, it looks really good. I do want to point out that several of these designs, even though we're putting them in this box, notice how the box does not confine all of them. It, it may for some of them if they come out as a point, but if they have a larger opening where they wing out past the corner, you're going to see that some of them will definitely bring you past the edges of that box. And if I was working um, on a quilt and that was happening, I would be okay with that. I would just let it do that and then out into the margins, you know, if I was doing an edge to edge, I would just let that overage hang off the batting. Okay, making sure that we're going the right direction, getting ourselves on these center lines and getting ourselves into the center. And that's where we'll rotate the design from the center here. So we won't close out that top part. We'll connect all of these first. All right, and then we'll just keep moving around and you'll see, so you can see at this point how this could make really, really pretty longer design. This could be something that you could do for a, a much larger area and notice how the size is really changing. These are gonna give a nice little overlap in here. Um, this isn't really as good for template, but maybe this part is, you know, or maybe you could cut away some of this and that would be some options. I know we have a lot of people that really have been enjoying the template method, so that might be an option for some people. These are designed to fill spaces. So this might be something that you would use in a negative space or if you have an open block. Um, Jan, I see your comment that the PDF is... Yeah, Oh, okay. So my, my sweet husband, who tried to organize that before so that it would have no permissions, is fixing it right now. And he's letting people in as they request permissions. But I'll turn that off after the uh, live so that everybody can access that where you just have to have the link. All right. So let's see how we're doing. So what do you think? Do you like this one? I think this one definitely would be better with some of these little flourishes on there. I think this one, I, I wouldn't want it to cross over like that. So I think I would use this one. This one would be really fun. And that's just part of the play. You want to kind of see what, what different things happen. And if you do all of that on paper, then uh, you can tell I changed my plan because I had a different one for the crosshatch that did not do that. <laughs> but I wanted to use that one in a different area. So I was switching it up and see, now I know. That is not a good plan. <laughs> oh, but you know, it's fun. It, you know, you just keep seeing new things. You get a little bit different. So I can complete this box, both of these boxes, if I'm in the center here. So what I'm going to do is at this point, I'm going to close this out and get over to here. And then I can close these, both of these, and then this one, and then I'll be able to finish out. And so I know it's a little bit of, you know, watching me so, but because this pattern is a little bit hard to explain, I thought it would be good if we could sew through it a little bit so you could see what I'm doing and how I'm making those decisions and also how I'm fudging. Because it's different with some of the different templates because some of them fit in there just beautifully and some of them you need a little bit more push and pull to get them to behave. Okay, so we're... We're here, we'll come into the center with the point, and now we can finish this whole box and come back to the center, remembering that the way to come back to that space is only doing it a half at the initial, right there. We always leave this side open. That's what allows us to pivot and get the whole thing lined up, okay? And this is gonna give us some fun secondary designs here where they all meet in the corner which is kind of cool. And I do think that this one definitely fits better than uh, some of the other ones that we've done because it's a lot easier to get this one to line up. Okay. And 
then right back here, we'll close this one. So I've got the alignment marks right there. And then I've also got one right here at the center. So I can kind of adjust both of those to help me so I can get right into this corner and close that design. What's nice about here is there's lots of stitching coming in. So if it's a little bit messy, nobody cares. That happens at all of the intersections. So that gives you a little bit of flexibility if they don't match perfectly. All right, and to the point right here, you can see it lines up beautifully right there. Get us right into that center. Okay, and then right now, we're at this point where we can finish this entire box and then we can close out our design there. Now, one of the things that you could easily do that would vary this design would be you could flip it. You could do one box points out, one box points in, and then right away you have a little bit of a visual variety that would make it a little bit of interest in there. That's bound to create some different secondary designs, which I love. The spin effects are great for that. So let's get lined up here. So I'm looking right here at this straight line and also this line right there, getting us right into the center there. always letting your needle finish finish moving before we uh, shift the template or anything like that sometimes when I take my foot off the gas I notice that the needle is still up and it needs to finish in the down position like that so you want to make sure it stops moving and then you can adjust so we're gonna get back to this corner and then we'll finish out this whole side right there and I'll show you the design So we'll get ourselves here. And right here, we'll be kind of at that um, center position. Get lined up right there. And now we're done. So there's my center line, and I've got these lines right there. Those can be really useful to making sure I close the design, or I can use my spacing gauge to bring me right into the corner and close the design. And I'll just tack that off. Right, and since we stitched over these ones at the beginning and at the end, we'll just cut those off too. Oh, look, I sewed through it. Darn it. All right, so there you go. This, this is just an example of how you can easily make that something that you can do over a much larger area, okay? Thank you, Linda. I'm glad that that helps you see it. And kind of what's so fun about the spin effects is, you know, we think it looks like that, right? That's, that's how it looks on the diagonal. But look at that. Isn't that cool? I just love it. I love how it creates a secondary design. And then, you know, we could, we could do anything. We could cut these if we had Templi, or we could put different free motion fills in there, or we could put those little veins in. And the way that you would want to maybe put the little veins in here is you could just put your needle in the center and you could put those little veinings in there or the crosshatch if you wanted to. All right, so there's the back. So we, I, I like to show you how it looks without the chalk, right? So you can see that it looks good, that we have good stitches. If you can't show the back, then it's not good enough, right? No, I'm sure it is. Busy backs are your friend. <laughs> okay, so let's show you our next one. Are you guys still with me or are you sick of me? 
We have a few more minutes. So I, I did want to show you um, one more. Let's see. It's kind of big. It's a big template. So it's, this is kind of a big size. And we're going to use a big template. And then this one is really where I want you to see that you could be doing this as edge to edge because this is going to cover a lot of space quickly because it's so big. Let's see. It's kind of wonky. There we go. Hopefully no puckers in there. <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. I'm glad you're not sick of me. <laughs> okay, so this one I want to share because this is where we're going to actually use a couple of templates together. And I've used some markings right there, you can see. And I'll show you what those markings are for um, as we get a little further along. So, you know, obviously, oh, it looks like I missed some lines, right? Well, let's see. Let's see if we can do it. If we can't, I'll mark the lines in. But our template does have a lot of lines on there, so we may be able to do it without it. So let's try it. So that SP is my start point right there. I just put a little note in there. And you can see how big this template is um, at the 11 and a half inch size. Oh, darn it. Here, let's put them on first, right? There we go. And then I'm going to show you how you can make some choices with your different sizes of spin effects and really change the design um, with just a few simple choices that you might want to make. So let me get you lined up. Oh, let's see. I think we do need that line because we need to know where the center is so we don't overshoot it. So let me mark it real quick. So here, I will share my marking pen, Bonds and Porter. This is a nice fine line mark. And all I'm doing is I'm marking the diagonal. And the, the reason that we mark the diagonal here is that we, we need to know where the center is because that's where the two pieces of the spin effects are gonna connect up. So they're gonna intersect right there. So let's go ahead and see if we can make the next mark as well. Oh, darn it, you guys. Here, let's pull this up. It's going to be too hard. It's going to be off of my so steady table. So let's just mark them real quick so you can see. So I'm just going to mark this right here. Put that center line in. So you can see that sometimes these lines can be really, really long. So it might not be as useful to use um, the crosshair square just because they are so long. The lines are so long. So you might need something longer. You could use it and then you could extend the lines, but if you're doing a really big area or you know, you're doing this as an edge to edge for your quilt, it might be just simpler just to mark it with a ruler just because they are so long. Okay, did we get them all? Okay, I think we did. All right, let's get back to the set. Here, Kate. So this one is the 11 and a half inch spin effects and the size of the block is an eight inch square so this is a nice easy math you know for this one <laughs> so we have essentially four units of it where's my little start point here I don't want you to get confused right does it matter what corner I start at it doesn't I can start at any one I want to and it would be okay Alrighty, there we go. Get that bobbin thread up and we'll put the template in. Now, this template is very interesting and I, I wanna show you a couple of things about it as we get started. A lot of the other templates are what I would call kind of a symmetrical look to them. Like if you, if you mirrored, they have a center axis. This one, it doesn't. If you look at it, let me turn it this way so you can see. See how if we line it up on the center, the majority of the design is offset. It's kind of weird and kind of interesting, huh? So when you're doing this, you want to know what 
your choice is. Like, you know that this is going to swing out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it swing out on this side every time. So as I set this up, I won't be flipping it around, um, you know, keeping this on that side. And notice how this one fits perfectly. I mean, this one is probably the best fit. This is the uh, 11 and a half, and it fits to within like point something zero decimal. So the fit on this is actually really accurate. So there's not a lot of fudging that you have to do. So on this one, we'll go ahead and we're going to start with this side. And we'll get right into the center. And then we want to make sure that we're keeping this curvature going around. So that's going to work out good for us. Let's see. So I'm getting everybody lined up and I'm going to, I want to come this way. Just make sure you're touching your uh, ruler in case there's any fudging going on. Okay, so we've got our pointy area. So right here is our alignment. Let's see if we can uh, make sure you guys can see. This one is so much bigger. So I'm gonna try to come up just a little bit so we can give you a little bit more of a wide angle view. That's a really big template. But what's great is he's gonna quilt up a large area so quickly. Okay, so right now we have the point is going to come in. So here the points are all on the outer edges. So now we want to come in with the curvy side. So notice how I've got to really work to get that center alignment. I Because it, it looks like you want to go like that. But make sure you use the line and use that center line to get yourself in there. Okay, and now we'll keep rotating this and get everybody lined up. Okay, and then we'll spin that and get that edge. angel wings that's a good idea I just uh, saw somebody was commenting that it looks like angel wings yeah Christmas I got to think of some way that we could make that into some kind of an angel project that would be cool all right let's keep rotating and we'll get ourselves lined up remember we're looking for this line and the center line So we will be able to finish this one and that will bring us into the center of the design. Okay, so here we, we are able to complete this box by lining up everybody at the center. So we can use these lines and we're touching really well. Like I said, this one has perhaps the best fit as far as size. Like there's not a lot of fudging going on with this one. So we're right at the center. And then we'll just pivot. We want to keep that pointed part on the outer edges. And so we have to line up right here on the center. So it somehow I keep thinking it wants to go like that because you want to put half and half. No, you can't do that with this one. He's got to be lined up on the center and the leaf will be to one side. So we'll do the inside first because we want to kind of go around that, that direction, right? So then just pivot, 
Get everybody lined up. And just like we've explained before, if I were to turn this template over and use it in the opposite direction, it would make a totally, completely different look, which I think is just so awesome. All right, let's get us lined up right here. So right here I'm checking that I have that good alignment up there at the top and it looks good to me. Right back to that center. And you can see how quickly this quilts up. Now one of the things that's interesting about this is that this one ends up with a lot of open space and I'm going to show you some ideas for how we're going to take care of that. So we don't want, you know, big giant open spaces on our quilt. I mean, you can have a low, low density quilting with this, which is nice, but if you want it a little bit more filled in, then I've got an idea for you. So here we are almost finished. So we're going to line right back up here at the center. And you can see he lines up pretty nicely. We might have to do a little smushing just because of quilt creep. So no problem there. Okay. And now who remembers when we start this box, what's the first thing that we need to do besides get lined up? We're only going to sew just the one side and that's what's going to bring us all the way around. So we don't want to accidentally just go on autopilot and start quilting the whole thing because that's kind of what ruins your pattern. So just sew the one side, get yourself into the center, and then you'll be able to get everybody lined up and get adjusted. So can you see that my foot wasn't right at the top of the template? That's because at the bottom I needed to make an adjustment and that was the easiest way. I would still be able to get the curve, but that way I could get right into the corner without overshooting it. And then here it's still going to work out because we can just give it a little tug. So because people want to know how to do it as a quilt and quilt it, can you tell I have a child that just came home? Honey's on it. He's going to go tell him to be quiet. <laughs> That's our COVID lifestyle, right? We're all at home. We're all working together. We've got to try and be patient with everybody. So look right here. We're lined up right here. And we've got our center line that comes right down through it. We're lined up. And if our little intersections down here don't quite fit, let me show you. Let me get you in there. We're right at the corner there. So right here, this should cross right where we need to come down. So there's my center alignment right there. And that, so if it doesn't, I could give it a little tug to get those seated properly in there. And that'll help close that up and make that look a little cleaner. Can you see though, this would totally quilt up a quilt really quickly because these designs are nice and big. And there's not a lot of uh, complicated. And if you had an eight inch ruler, an eight inch wide, you know, ruler, could you imagine you could mark this so quickly and so easily? It would be awesome. Now, again, this fits with all of our 11 and a half inch templates. It's not just that it fits this one. I just happened to choose this one. But that's what's kind of cool about the spin effects is they kind of come in these uh, regulated sizes. And that gives you a lot of freedom to just have a few numbers that you need to use. And a two and a half inch square is a pretty easy thing to mark. And so there's not a lot of, of, of complications with this to be able to use this and maybe do an edge to edge. So we'll get back in here, we'll close this. Oh, did you see I bond bond? My quilt is binding up a little bit. There's a loose thread right here and it just pulled the quilt so that it couldn't go where it needed to go. Alrighty, let's see. You definitely have a loose thread in there somewhere. Do you see it? He's tagged in. So he's making trouble, so we'll get him out. 
So let's do bonbon bon time for those people that have not seen it before. So my ruler is properly lined up, maybe right there. And I'm not touching at all right there. See how far away I am? So the last place that I know that I was correctly positioned was right here in the center where all of these come together. So I'm just gonna pick up my needle and release my presser foot. I'll just hold this to keep this out of the way. And I'm gonna get this line right back in the center. And I'll go ahead and I'll take a few tacking stitches. Now I recognize that now there's a thread in there but I am gonna just sew one line. I'm just gonna go with it. I think it's gonna be fine and I'll deal with it on the bottom if I need to later, okay? So let's get aligned again so that we can get our design closed. We're tacked off. And that's the clean line now. Okay. And let me just show you this really quickly. So right here now, I can rip these stitches back until they're overstitched, right? Because I overstitched a little bit right there, but I can rip all these back. This is the bonbon time. When I'm sitting around eating bonbons, I can just pick these stitches out, and now I don't have to come back because this is already secured right there. I already tacked it off, okay? All right, so let's see what we're doing. Let's get back to the center here. We are almost finished, and then I wanna show you my fun little embellishment detail that we can do with this guy. So it looks like I maybe need a little stitch to close. So I'm just gonna put one in there. So here's my alignment right here. You can see I'm lined up right on the line. Wine time. Yes. Okay. I'm going to, I, maybe I'll start calling it wine time, but then that sounds too much like whining and then I can't deal with it. I can't be, can't be whining. Right. So I've got, um, this trying to intersect right there. There's my diagonal line. So I'm going to try to get that right there. Notice that I'm not quite at the top of the template, but I'm going to connect at the bottom. So I'm not going to worry about the top. I'm just going to come down and let this be cleaned up. So yeah, that's some of that fudging. I should get right into this bottom corner nice and clean. That's perfect, right? And so now on the top here, now I can fudge this a little bit if I need to. This will help clean it up as we come back in on this side. See, he'll just clean it all up for me, love it. All right, and this is the last one, and then we'll show you that little embellishment detail. And then that's it for today. Thanks for your patience. I know it's this, you know, we're sewing along here. Hopefully this is good information and you're getting to see how you might wanna move things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tack this right here. Make sure he's closed. Now on this one, if I'm gonna do the little embellishing detail, I would probably do it after. I think that's too complicated to try to do it at the same time, but I'll show you. Okay. Clean this all up, get these extra threads off of here. All right, and there you go, there's your design. And let me grab a couple of other pieces so we can show you the embellishment. Okay, so we have this space right here now. And each of these is, is a place where we can continue the design, right? So what we're gonna do is put this on and I'm gonna try and make the foot touch, you know, somewhere. So let's go ahead and mark that somewhere so that we can do it the same on each one. And you can choose, and what I'm gonna choose is, I'm, I know that this will give me a quarter inch, but it'll also make this as big as it can be. So we'll kind of say, we'll try to touch the foot right there, and then this is where the other one will touch. So when we sew around, we're gonna sew back up to there and stop right there, okay? Can you guys see that? So we're gonna set our foot on this side at that position, 
And when we sew around, we'll complete it and we'll come back up and stop there for the next one. All right, and so this would be something that would obviously take more time. We will check the foot position right there just to make sure that we're lined up, right? And then we'll bring the foot up to there. We don't want to stitch that whole side again because he's already stitched. So let's tack this in a little bit. We'll just sew in the existing stitch line, a few stitches. Okay, get those out of our way. And I can use a lot of the same alignments here, but we are rotating. So this line is not going to line up. So what, what I do is I put my finger right there, my pinky finger, and that is kind of about the size of my foot. Essentially, that's what I use. Okay. Oh, you guys, what's wrong with me today? <laughs> Maybe I had a little too much wine before we got started. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll just bomb on time that. And so you can see this is going to end up making this filled in a little bit more. Right? So we, I could leave this open. I could even take this out and the needle stop is in line right there. So as I sew back in, I would just put the needle in line and that way I don't have to worry about the key. Okay? So we'll do one more just so you can kind of see the last little bit and then we will let you go on with your Sunday, huh? Probably have dinner plans. All right. So this is what I mean about the needle alignment right there. We could just line this up and we could just pivot this like that. This is going to echo that. So we would want to go ahead and stitch up there. So mine's not quite perfect, but we'll just go with it. Notice that I do not have any grip tapes on this one. Ugh, yikes. And that's going to get us right back there. And so what you could do is you could have a little fan and they will go into each other, each one. This will come in, this will come in, and that will come in. And you would, you would be doing that at each point. So I can get two for one with these. Let me show you. So we did this one. I could come back and I could do that one here as well, and I could get this side in also in order to get two. So at every point, wherever we are, we should be able to get maybe two of them May, maybe except for the corner. So here I could get one on this side and then you could travel and do that one. That way we can get more of that design on the inside because you're on this inner curve. So this one right here will be able to fill in at the same time. All right, let's tack it off and uh, we'll pull it out so you can see the back. Well, Noel, thank you so much. Noel Fisher said, with COVID, I'm her Sunday. And honestly, you guys are my Sunday too. I really do look forward to it. And I'd love sharing this. And I, I you know, some, sometimes I'm like Friday night, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? <laughs> oh, the inspiration. It hasn't struck yet. But usually by Sunday morning, I have some good concept right there. So there's our bonbon time right there. We'll clean that up later. And here, remember to sew back up on the template and then switch because this will give you a clean stitch. It'll put your foot up here and then you won't get any of this wonky overstitching like I did. It'll look just like this because your foot will be right where you want it to be. And that's what those marks on the template were for. And I just think that looks so cool. That would really fill this in. This is also very easy to echo with that really big template. So let me just, I'm, I'll just set it on there to show you. I won't stitch it out, but you can completely echo this just like that. Here, if you put that at your half inch with your spacing gauge, you'll have a beautiful echo right there that you can just put that echo in there like this. And you would sew until the foot touches. So let's go up a little bit. There you go, like that. So here, we would sew right up in here until the foot is touching right there, touching that stitch line. And then you can just rotate that and align it at the half inch there. Sew down until you touch. So we could fill in all of these spaces which, with an echo, which would make this design jump 
out. So let's see. I think I have one more sample I'll show you. I won't sew it, but it's just a visual, and then we'll be finished. So this is how it looks if you do it the other way, right? So these ones have these coming into the center and then your box spacing, these are outside. So remember we said that sometimes they'll go outside your box. So that's what you see here if you flip that around where the wider part is going to the corners. But I kind of like how these hook into each other. They dip in and out. And I, I think that makes a really fun kind of a swirl -a gig with this um, part of the design. So this would just be using the same template that we just did, just using it a little differently. All right, so thank you guys for hanging with me. I know it's kind of a long lesson today, but I didn't think we'd have enough time to, to use it on a second event. So have a wonderful quilting weekend. I will go through and check all of the questions for sure. I know it's hard for me to do that while I'm actually sewing. And um, I will make sure that the PDF is accessible for anybody that needs that. And then if you would do me the favor, you know, just it does really help me out if you could like or comment or share, you know, and let me know what would you like to see? Was this good information? Was it too complicated? Was it not, you know, whatever, whatever you think. I do respond to your input. I do try to meet the need and do what people are asking if they have some questions. So I do have some things in the works. Some might take a little longer than others, but this would be an amazing way to do empty space, negative space, or all over quilting. And we all have spin effects in different sizes. So that would be just an amazing opportunity for you to see how you can do this as a continuous design. Have a great weekend and happy quilting. Take care, you guys. I will see you next week.